Hello everybody, just a quick announcement before we get into the video. You might have heard me mention in the last video the thing about TCG Player Infinites, but I will give you a rundown if you are new here. So you only have two days left, today and the 30th, to get early access to TCG Player Infinite using the code MarinMTG. And if you're actually new here and don't know what that is, I will let you guys know. So everybody knows what TCGplayer.com is. It is the best place on the internet to buy magic cards or cards from any TCG. And when you sign up for Infinite, you get super fast shipping on your orders. Depending on where you're at, as fast as same day shipping, which is wild. You get 3% store credit back on your orders, which that's basically free stuff. And then the best part is you get free shipping on whatever you order, and that's awesome. You can sign up for $6.99 a month. And if you're somebody who likes to buy magic cards on a regular basis, this is definitely something you want. You can find the link in the description down below or go to infinite.tcgplayer.com. And don't forget to use the code MarinMTG when you sign up. We are promoting this for the month of November and our goal is to get 100 people to sign up by the end of the month. We are currently at 17 people, so thank you to everybody who chose to sign up this month. I really appreciate it. TCGplayer.com really appreciates it. We only got two days left, so if you wanted to sign up, now is the time. Let's see how close we can get. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Pioneer gameplay video. Today we're doing some colorless Eldrazi beatdowns. You all know it, you all love it. Now, this was an idea sent to me by Cybershade. You might recognize him from our Twitch chat. I've mentioned his name in a few videos and he came to me with this list and I thought it was pretty cool. So we whipped up something for you guys here today. So let's jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. I want to just go ahead and point out that this deck looks absolutely beautiful to look at. Also, I'm surprised that I haven't really seen anybody else do Eldrazi in Pioneer. And in testing, it seems surprisingly powerful. So maybe I'm overestimating it, or maybe it's actually something that can become a thing. So let's check it out. Let's start right off with our cheaper Eldrazi. Mattery Shaper is a good body to block with because it just replaces itself and you can relentlessly attack with it with no fear of trading because you're gonna get value. And Thought Not Seer is bad value if it dies, but really good value when it sits out there. Takes a card right out of the opponent's hand, can snatch their Wrath, their good Planeswalker, their best creature, their removal spell, whatever it is you want it to snatch. And that's pretty nice control there. And then on to our more mid-game stuff, we got Walker of the Wastes and Reality Smasher. So Walker of the Wastes is going to get plus one, plus one for each land we control named Wastes. This also has Trample. So basically, if we have like four Wastes, this is going to be like a five mana, eight, eight Trample. And we do have a lot of Wastes in this deck, so this is going to be just a vanilla fat Trampler. And then Reality Smasher is another Trampler, but it's a hasty five, five for five. So that's pretty great. Also, it's difficult to kill because if the opponent wants to target it, they have to also discard a card. That's just more value on top of Thought Not Seer itself. So, and then even Mattery Shaper is a two for one. So all these two for ones gonna be quite good. Now on to our later game, Aldrazi. So Endbringer is a value machine. Untaps during each untap step as well. So we can start pinging stuff. We can start drawing cards in everybody's turn. We can just make creatures unable to attack so that if the board is at like a stall, we can just like win that war, especially when we start stacking Endbringers. And then Bane of Balaged is our Annihilator that is in Pioneer. Because all the Eldrazi's that didn't make it into Pioneer are the Annihilator ones, but this one has pseudo Annihilator. So when it attacks the opponent, it has to sack two permanents or Exile two permanents they control. So it's kind of like Annihilator. Um, 7 mana, 7 5 is not bad. And then onto our ramp, we got a playset of Hedron Crawler and a playset of Pillar of the Peruns. Or not Peruns, Pillar of Origins. These are our ramp rocks in this deck. These are the only two. Uh, two drop rocks that we can get for Eldrazi in Pioneer. There's no other things than this. At least I don't think there is. Um, so yeah, that's our ramp. And then onto our removal spells, we got two copies of Spatial Contortion for cheap stuff and then Titan's Presence. Now, I had more Spatial Contortions and even this list used to have Warping Whales. Um, but Cybershade, the deck creator, um, um, ensures that Titan's Presence has been working out pretty well. So I'm going to trust his judgment and go with some Titan Presences. So we have to reveal a big Eldrazi from our hand and exile a creature. Straight up three mana exile a creature. So that's not bad, but we have to have an Eldrazi in hand. But we do have a lot of expensive Eldrazi's like Reality Smasher, Walker of the Ways, Bane and and Endbringer. In testing though, feels like there's some turns where I'd rather play the Eldrazi itself rather than Titan's Presence something, but you never know, it could be pretty clutch. And then onto our final spell that's not an Eldrazi or something to help it. 
Ugane Ineffable is just a value machine. It starts making 2-2s, two and when they die, you get to get that card to your hand, so it just starts generating card advantage. And then minus three is to blow up colored permanents, blows up walkers, detention spheres, creatures, anything. And then it also makes our Eldrazi's cost less. So make like two mana Thought Not Seers, three mana Reality Smashers, four mana Endbringers, and, and five mana Bane of Malagets. That's pretty sweet. So it's just gonna make sure we can cast everything pretty efficiently. And with that advantage, we should be able to drop stuff out at an alarming rate. We have a total of 25 lands. Yes, I know it does sound like a lot, but we have a lot of clunky stuff. I want to get it to Uginon Curve, okay? And we also do have a lot of tech lands in here. We got Tomb of the Spear Dragon to gain a bunch of life. We got Blast Zone to ma Mana Sink into to start blowing up permanents. We got a Singleton Guy Reach Sanitarium to start looting. Then we got a place out of Cryptic Caves. Now, this is one of the main payoffs we're going. 25 lands. So Cryptic Caves is basically our Horizon Canopy in Colorless. So that's pretty nice. Now, as always, sideboards are prone to changes if there is, I'll let you know. Um, but I think the sideboard seems pretty solid. So let's just go over it. We got three copies of Graf Digger's Cage to stop reanimator strategies. We got one single copy of Warping Whale just to bring in against little creature weenie aggro decks to exile X1s. We got two copies of Sorcerer Spyglass to shut down Planeswalkers. We got two copies of the other two copies of Spatial Contortion, again for cheap little creatures. Then we got two copies of Karn Scion of Urza and two copies of Mystic Forge. This package is to bring in for these slow granny matchups where we just want some card advantage. So in a matchup where we don't have to like pressure our opponent and play anything on turn four, we just play Mystic Forge and start generating value. Karn just ticks up to start generating value. And then we got three copies of Ratchet Bomb. Again, against the cheap weenie aggro decks to just start blowing up a lot of their one drop and two drop creatures. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. If you wanted to pick up today's deck, or any cards really, it would be awesome if you purchased through our decklist link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link, and when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. This video is supported by our generous patrons. If you'd like to join the marination as well, you can find our Patreon link down below in the description, and you'll also gain access to our Patreon-exclusive Discord server where we discuss deck ideas for future videos. Got a game here against Oz Fan 6, and yes, we're going to be on the play with some colorless Eldrazi and Pioneer. I'm going to keep that. If we do end up getting more lands getting flooded, Cryptic Caves, it can cycle themselves, so it's like we're kind of not flooded. And Oz Fan 6 is very familiar. I think he was in my chat before. Why is everybody on blue white decks? That's what I don't understand. I know, like, literally Azurius is the best color combination in um, Pioneer. But there's so many people who just want to play it. Like, it's... I want some diversity. I want to have fun. Alright, let's go with Mattery Shaper. Wait, what is this? Oh, that's the recipe. Oh, shortbread. Nice. All right, let's get in there for a swing of sorts. The opponent's on some kind of Turbo Fog mono board wipe deck. Let's name Eldrazi. Has a turn. Cracks Elixir. So they they have Elixir and Quicken. They're probably definitely just, just Turbo Fog, Blue White, just make you mill out by a win con. Right, let's go to combat to get in there for three. And I could go Mattery Shaper plus tick up Blast Zone. But I guess we're going to put our opponent to the test to try to like, you know, deal with our board. They did whiff their land drop, so that's a good sign. And it looks like we're getting flooded, but we can just crack these cryptic caves, so good. Elixir again. Gaining chunks of five. Can I get a wastes? Nope. Alright. Um I kind of wanna just crack a cryptic caves and see what I get. Okay, that's another waste to pump the walker of the wastes, so that's good. Get in there. For an amount. And I'm okay with committing this Mattery Shaper. 
And uh, Adrian Crawler does nothing at this point, so might as well commit it as well. And if they want to blast someone on two, that's fine. If they want to waste a land to do that, then I'm okay with them going down in lands. All right, and they can stay alive by cracking that thing. Oh, dude, Reality Smasher is probably going to be the nail in the coffin. Um, yeah, I'm going to play a land first just in case they have some kind of, like, pay mana or else spell. And that should do it, I think. Yeah, because they're probably going to crack their elixir to stay alive, but not when I have a Reality Smasher. All right, and that'll do it. Moving on to the sideboard. I feel like Warping Whale is going to be clutch here to ex to uh, counter a Sorcery Spell. Because I feel like they're going to have a very relevant Sorcery Spell. They even had Quicken to do an Instant Speed Sorcery Spell. Probably Instant Speed Supreme Verdict, which we can't counter, but I think it might be worth it. All I know is that we don't need removal, so cut Titan's Presence and Spatial Contortion. And I probably also want the value things like Mystic Frog and um, Arn. And I don't know if I want Sorcerer Spyglass, but it could be relevant. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. Bane and Balagids are a little bit slow as well. And might as well bring in one Sorcerer Spyglass just in case and run it like that. You guys are just like sharing recipes in the chat, aren't you? <laughs> All right, let's keep this hand. It seems good. We got our sideboard warping well, which is nice. Got pillar to ramp into turn three thought knots here. All right, let's go blast zone. Go. Castle Vantress says go. All right, pillar of origins. El Ramsey. All fountain tapped. All right, well, let's go for the Thought Knots here. No counter spells. All right, what you got? Supreme Verdict, Hour Revelation, Last Breath. Last Breath does nothing, I don't think. So, um, Azuri's Charm's annoying, but I think it's got to be the Verdict. This costs less if there's 10 permanents on the field. Yeah, I think I'm going to take Verdict because it's their cheapest board wipe. And then let's just say go. Because I can counter Hour Revelation with Warping Whale. It is a sorcery, right? Of course it is. All right, so when it's coming up, I know to just leave up. Um, what you call it? Let's go Pillar of Origins into Matter Shaper, I think. So let's just swing the Thought here first. Get it, um, Azurius Charmed because I know it's gonna happen. It actually doesn't. They're just gonna they're just gonna let me commit into the board so that they can Hour of Revelation. So let's go. Eldrazi. First, let me see if it says non-land permanents. If there are 10 or more, yeah, there's definitely not. So let's just go Matter Shaper. And pass a turn. They can't hour yet. They're going to cycle to draw a card. They play a Temple of Enligatin Mint. They go looking for their sixth land. And now, here's the point where I'm going to definitely leave up Warping Whale. Let's play Cryptic Cave so we can crack it. I probably should have cracked the Cryptic Caves first. Alright, uh... You know, I'm not going to. Let's just pass. I'll do it on their turn. I could also start taking up Blast Zone as well, which might be relevant. Counter a sorcery spell. Eat it. Nice. All right, let's uh, crack this cryptic caves. There's an Endbringer. That's nice. Ooh, Reality Smasher. That's probably better, right? Let's do it. This is cool. Get them the two. Any future Reality Smashers now lethal. Let's see if they topped another board wipe. And they didn't get it! Walking all over them. See? I knew the Warping Well was going to be clutch. That's why I added a set. Did I add a second one? I don't think I did. Maybe I should add a second one because that's awesome. Got a game here against Carnage Cards ENT. I know this person. Where do I know this person? Well, that's a good keep. Let's keep that. I'm going to ramp into Reality Smasher real quick. Or Tanner Building Steam Vent. So Just Guy Control. Okay, like just guy smuggler's copter value town. There's an Ugin. With Hedron Crawler, we can ramp into that pretty good. I think I'm gonna start on Pillar of Origins instead, though, because um, the steam vent scares me that they might have Wild Slash. Chart, of course. 
Oh, is it a God Pharaoh's gift or like something like that? They discard a Thraven Inspector. They don't even go attacking first. They could have went attacking so they didn't have to discard. But I think they wanted to discard. I think they are maybe God Pharaoh's gift. All right, Pillar of Origins on Eldrazi. And let's pass a turn. Yo, Modern Magician. Tried messing you in game to congratulate. Oh, I don't I don't have the uh I don't have the uh in-game chat open because I use a layout. So everything you see, um every bit of game you see on my screen is all I see as well. Everything past it is just like my desktop and my chat. Like I, I don't have the chat screen open because I, I would love to full screen moto, but my chat would be cutting off a little bit of my hand. And if there was a way to fix that, that would be super awesome. But there isn't, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, wait, so yeah, definitely a God Pharaoh's gift. That guy nailed it. So they're trying to refurbish back a God Pharaoh's gift. That's their plan. Cryptic Caves, and I guess we're going to go with... Dude, now I'm kind of tempted to Hedron Crawler so I can Ugin next turn. You know what? It's probably smarter to just go Mattery Shaper into Reality Smasher into Ugin. It's probably just a better curve. Now I couldn't Ugin next turn if I wanted to, actually, because Pillar only adds mana for Eldrazi. Reflector Mage, bouncing the Reshaper. That's actually fine. Mm hmm. At least they're not bouncing my Reality Smasher, which is the bigger thing to bounce. That's good. Titan's Presence, I don't need to do anything about that yet. Reality Smasher, let's start trying to race, get in there for five. The only thing I'm really scared of is Angel of Invention, which I should be able to Titan Titan's Presence since I drive Fatty. Party one. Where's the message? Party one, party one, party one, party one, party one, party one, party one. I got that. I got you. Thank you so much for the biddies, the 10 tiggle biddies, water magician. All right. So we can go. Actually, we can't go Ugin here. But I can, I can um, bait them. I can bait them into triple blocking and then I can Titan's Presence. So let's do it. And then I can still follow up with Mattery Shaper. So let's see if they want to triple block, which I bet they will. They are. Okay. So it's Exile Champion of Wits revealing Mattery Shaper. And take that good old two-for-one, which that does put creatures in their graveyard for uh, into the afterlife. Now I can go Matter Shaper, and the next turn Ugin, and we should be solid. But Ugin alone doesn't beat God Pharaoh's Gift, so that's still going to be a very big problem. And they are just two mana away from casting it, and they can mill themselves with Ibni Rivulet. And they are going to mill themselves with Ibni Rivulet. And now they have one, two, three, four creatures in the grave. They need seven, I believe. Verdict. Okay, well, at least I get to ramp off of that. And I get a Bane of Balaged, which I can play. And that's got Annihilator, and that's solid, dude. Let's do that. That is solid. If this thing gets in a swing, they lose. <laughs> Unless they can refurbish a Godfrey's Gift here, I think that this Bane of Balaged just eats them alive. When it attacks, they exile two permanents they control. Let me guess, another Verdict. Metamai the Ageless, that's fine. Ugin can bop that. Hello. NCPD Tom, thank you for the follow. All right, let's go Ugin here. Ugin the Ineffable. Blow up Metamai and then swing and make him sack two permanents. So good. Let's go Hedron Crawler. Pillar of Origins on Eldrazi. Go swinging. 
Now, opponent, I'm gonna need you to sack two permanents, please. So if their last cards are literally gate to the afterlife, land. I'd be salty. But then again, they can't even do it. Yeah, they don't have enough mana. All right, sweet. We got there. That was the a pretty nuts draw from us. Uh, now, I definitely want Warping Whale because it can counter a refurbish, and that's very relevant. Um, I probably want... Okay, so somebody told me that uh, Grafter's Cage does not stop God Pharaoh's Gift. So let me actually look this up. God gift. God Pharaoh's gift. At the beginning of combat, you may exile a creature from your graveyard. If you do create a token, this is a copy of it. Yeah, see, it doesn't work. God Pharaoh's gift does not work with Grab Digger's Cage. So no reason to bring that in. A uh, Ratchet Bomb on zero can blow up the tokens that God Pharaoh's gift makes, but that's probably not super relevant. Uh, they do have a lot of cheap creatures that I can spatially contort, but I probably just want to leave it with just the Warping Whale, right? They do have a bunch of rats, and I feel like they're going to sideboard in more, so maybe I want Karn and Mystic Forge for value. I'm not quite sure. I think I'll just leave it like this for now, and I don't think I really need Spatial Contortion. Let's cut one of those. Yeah, that just puts creatures in the grave, which they want to do. So I guess I'll just cut it and bring in a Karn just for value. All right, let's do that. The tokens weirdly have enough, or have converted mana cost, so they do. All right, so Ratchet Bomb actually does nothing here. What if I put Ratchet Bomb on, uh, like, second turn and just take it up to seven? That'd be hilarious. Okay, that's a potential turn three Thought not here, so I'm going to keep it. You think I want red bubble? RB. Okay. Let's go. Okay, I really need a land. I whiff my land twice in a row. It's got a bunch of pillars. I remember seeing some weird interactions with um, the tokens in CMC. Yeah, but like, Sore Wolf said, that, or you said that they have converted mana cost. And I did not get, I did not get mana. Alright, so. Pillar on Eldrazi, pass a turn. Okay, they, they whiffed as well. They ditch a God Pharaoh's gift. That's what their plan was. They're trying to just get that back with refurbish. So they didn't actually whiff. But Thought Not Seer might be able to take their refurbishes because I have two Thought Not Seers. So hopefully that's the case and hopefully they don't have hard removal. They are just going to syncopate it, disable stroke it. That's fine. Really need a land, dude. I really need a land. Wow, they actually didn't whiff. That was a legitimate discard. All right, well, let's um, Pillar of Origins on Eldrazi. And get out of Thought Nuts here. Disenchant on a pillar. That's fine. I don't know why they didn't do that earlier. Okay, so I probably want to take the Refurbish. It's probably smarter to take Supreme Verdict, but... Refurbish currently doesn't get them anything. Champion or reflect, Reflector Mage is also really annoying. Okay, I think since I have five mana and I can get a double Reality Smasher, I think my plan is to just aggro them out before they can do anything. So I think I'm taking Reflector Mage here. Yeah. All right, so Operation Smasher into Smasher. Let's do it. Hello. I'm at Justin. Thank you for the follow. Okay, that was a really good top deck from the opponent. Something they can cast and draw them cards. So now they can actually discard a creature that's relevant. Well, wow. they, they actually didn't draw lands in those two cards and like, screw it, I'm done. <laughs> and a Smasher into Smasher was probably going to get it because we're going to hit them for 9 down to 11 and then hit them for 14 down to negative 3. And I don't think they had anything they could do about that. So GG to God Pharaoh's Gift. They did get a little bit screwed. Uh, we were a little bit choked up on mana too, but those pillars really helped us out. And uh, nice.
Got a game here again, Sandman Nest, and we're going to be on the draw with some Pioneer Colorless Eldrazi, and that looks like a keep. We can, if we draw a land, we can do a turn three Thought Not Seer, and those are always the hands that you want to do with this, um, with this deck. All right, so Once Upon a Time can be one of many things, Sylvan Carry added, so this is probably um, Black Green, no wait, not Feel of the Dead. Mono Green, it's going to be that Mono Green deck, huh? It's definitely going to be that Mono Green, um, just Golos Ramp with with cascade bluffs right i think that's what it might be yo pudding how's it going what's up tito burrito definitely don't miss reckless rage being in standard feather is such trash i mean that's a matter of opinion but yeah feather is a little annoying please give me a land deck please give me a land Thought Knots here is definitely needed against, um, is definitely needed against the mono green ramp because you got to take out their bomb and they don't have much removal or any removal. So Thought Knots here is literally just straight up a thought seize. So yeah, Sanctum is definitely that mono green hour of promise Golos deck for sure. Please give me a land. Oh, clinch. No. No, I didn't get the land. All right, I'm probably screwed here. They're probably gonna get out like a Nissa or something. Yeah, I'm mega screwed now. They're gonna have to resolve a monster. Unless they just go with Nissa's Renewal here or something. Castle Garenbrig. Hedron Archive, okay. This is Pilgrimage, that's fine. So now I can get out Thought on Seer and hopefully take an Ulamog out. And hoping they don't have like Genesis Wave or something. Got the land. So let's go Thought on Seer. And uh, we can th take out their Great Aurora. That's gonna do something. They got triple force in hand, so there's not a whole lot going on. So we're at the mercy of the top of their deck. They top deck anything good, we lose. They're gonna crack the Hedron Archive, draw a bunch. Sylvan Carry added. And Sylvan Carry added. A lot of Sylvan Carry added there. So hopefully. Okay, this Thought Monster is not gonna do anything. We know their hand. They did draw, they might have one unknown. But I think it's time to get out Smasher and try to go for game. I have to end this game quickly before they can do anything. So get out Smasher and try to end this game. Get him for 9. They go down to 11. Cracks of Blighted Woodland. They can go searching for some things. And nothing. Okay. Spatial Contortions. So I can use these Spatial Contortions to pump my attackers, which I will try to do next turn, but this turn I definitely want to uh, Thought Knots hear them again. If they don't block, I actually just get lethal here. Okay, can I get lethal here? So I can pump up to 8, they take... Uh, no, that's not lethal. Wait! It is lethal! Double Spatial Contortions lethal here! I pump Thought Knots here, I pump Reality Smasher. That's lethal! Yo! The reach is real. <laughs> Yo, that's so good. <laughs> oh man, snuck it out. We did not deserve that one at all. All right, going on to the next game. So we are going to bring in... Uh, Damping Sphere, maybe? It stops Nyssa. But... Titan's Presence is not going to do anything here. Spatial Contortion is not going to do much unless they got like Lana War Elves, which they don't play Lana War Elves. Ratchet Bomb can kill Sylvan Carry Adids. Sorcerer Spyglass can stop. Um, probably nothing. Uh, I really don't know what I'm supposed to bring in here. I don't think I want these. And I have four extra slots, so I might as well just bring in like these. Warping Well, I guess, can counter a sorcery, and they got a lot of big rampy spells. So I bring in that. Maybe I just bring in the Karns. 
maybe the damping sphere because it stops Nyssa. Maybe Sorcerer Spyglass for Nyssa. Um, let me see. Maybe I just try to stop Nyssa and bring in these. All right, let's do it. The only thing we can try to stop is Nyssa, I guess. All right. That is going to be a keep. I want to just draw like the most insane ramp in the world so that we can get up to this Bane of Balaged quick. And we got Pillar plus Hadrian Crawler, so we just got to draw two or three more sources of mana. They do have Land War Elves, so I should have kept this Facial Contortion. All right, I'll bring it in in game three because I know we're not getting this one. <laughs> They got an Ulamog off uh, Once Upon a Time. And Nissa's Pilgrimage is happening. Dude, this, this Mono Green deck is right up my alley. I play Mono Green Ramp like all the time, casually. Alright, don't naturalize this, please. Give me another Hedron Crawler off the top. I need a ramp. Yep, and if they have another ramp spell, they can play Ulamog next turn. At least I can play Mattery Shaper. I need Thought Knots here or Land. And I did get the land, so at least I can uh I can blast on away that land or elves. How much mana do they got here? Six, seven, eight, nine. So it will stop them from like getting out of the mog next turn. And I'm pretty sure they got another land drop in hand. Pretty positive. So it's probably smartest to just blow up this blast zone. But they're just gonna go land, land thing. But maybe that buys me a turn. Maybe that buys me a turn to actually draw thought knots here. But dude, it's just not smart. The smartest thing is to just slam an Endbringer. Like, every fiber of my being just wants me to drop out, or wants me to blow up this Blast Zone. But I know that, I know that anybody will just make this Endbringer play here. Land Ulamog. Yep. All right, let me see what my next card was. Was it a Thought Knots here? Okay, it wasn't. So I don't think they got Nissa. It looks like they're just mono land ramp. So I guess let's cut Sorcerer Spyglass and let's cut Damping Sphere and let's bring in three Spatial Contortions. Run it like that. Warping Whale would be so good in this matchup as a playset. Just counter all of their land search spells, counter the explosive veggies. Alright, I would like to play first. Um, it's not good, but I'll keep it, because uh, I don't think I can do better than that if I mold a six. But ideally, we draw some ramp. Once upon a Timmy. Yo, Toronto, Canada, yeah! How's it going? Welcome back to the stream. And I did not get a Spatial Contortion or some ramp, so... Now the opponent can go ahead and ramp like crazy here. Yep, Nissa's Pilgrimage. The same start, the, literally the same start as they did last time. Did they find Ulamog off that as well? Nope. Different start. Give me four Thought Knots ears in a row, please. Yep, another crack Blighted Woodland ramp again. That's not what I wanted. So I can blow up uh, Blast Zone here, but I need, I need my mana. And there's Nissa's Renewal. All right, well, I'm going to loot with Gyre Sanitarium. I have to find Thought Knots here or else I die next turn. 
Yep, Lana Orals, I can blow that up with the blast zone. And let's go ahead and loot here. Please give me Thought Not Seer. Let's see, that is a Thought Not Seer. All right, I won't hit my land drops. Let's discard an Endbringer. Okay, uh, Thought Not Seer, 100%. Please don't have two Ulamogs. The Great Aurora in lands. Thank you. Thank you, Thought Not Seer. All right, get in for three. Yep. Oh, don't tell me. Don't tell. Okay, this is renewal. Okay. Uh, cryptic caves, and I think the way we end this quickly or quicker is probably just going to end bringer here. I could I could blast zone away their dudes, but I think that I want to just start dropping fatties instead. They're gonna keep their elves. Okay, we're at the mercy of their top deck now. Land? Please say go. No, dude, what are you doing? No. Okay, that doesn't affect us too badly, but it'd be fine. They're going to take up on us. All right. So, Reality Smasher. And I think I just have to go all at them, right? Just try to aggro them out. Um, Like, they're not ready to ult that Ugin yet. So, I guess I just go all at them relentlessly. Right? Just not even pay attention to Ugin. They are going to chump and chump. And let's play Hedron Crawler. Alright, opponent. Don't you dare top deck the nuts. Last card. What is it going to be? They're going to shoot the that thing. That's fine. What am I going to get? Oh, a blast zone. Put it to the battlefield. And Sylvan Carry added. Alright, let's... uh. What is this old minus 10? All right, let's uh, shoot them for one. Uh, cryptic caves. All right, what can I do to get lethal here? I attack, they, they can chump block. So I have to find like another reality smasher or something. So let's crack a cryptic caves. Play cryptic caves, crack a cryptic caves. Oh, I'm one short of casting. No, wait, am I? Yeah, I'm one short of casting Bane of Balaged here. So I think I have to swing Reality Smasher at Ugin and the rest at them. Um. All right, yeah. So Reality Smasher at Ugin, this at them, this at them. Maybe I can still beat an Ulamog from this, uh, from this point. I don't think I'm completely dead to an Ulamog here. Alright, pass the turn. Alright, opponent, top deck. Last chance, what do you have? Oh, man. Once upon a time, they have five chances at an Ulamog now. Castle Garen Brig. That's not it. That's not it. Oh man, we got there. Oh, that was intense. That mono green ramp deck is like so cool. That's like my, my favorite Pioneer deck, probably. Like, I love me some mono green ramp. That was like my first serious standard deck I ever built back in M13. Got a game here against D Tot Heb. And we're going to be in the draw with some colorless Eldrazi and Pioneer. And that is going to be slow but a keep because at least i got titan's presence to exile a creature now we played against d todd head before i don't remember what he plays was he the red white prison guy oh he might be oh he might be this is probably going to be a very long game this is probably going to be a long one yeah this this is definitely the um oh his name's d to the b oh 
Well, he should put some capitalizations, you know what I mean? This is gonna take a while. Okay, thank goodness he's aggro. So now we can lose quickly. <laughs> I definitely need the sideboard for this to, to do anything. No, it's Feather. It's just Boros Feather. I remember playing against this before. At least I nailed Red White. I kind of get that impression from Hazaret plus Gideon. Or that's Oketra plus Gideon, but still. Um, I know they're going to God's Willing. But I'm still going to try this anyways. Does God's Willing give protection from Colorless? I don't think it does. Alright, they are going to define strike, bop us for a lot, but we're still very much alive. We're not super dead. Alright, let's Titan's Presence this now. Feeling Reality Smasher. And pass a turn. Let's see if they got, like, Feather or another one or something. That thing's crazy because it's got haste. That thing should not have haste. For, for what its ability is, it should not have haste. It's crazy. Oh no, another Swiss Spear. I didn't want to see that because now they can get all the prowess and just cantrip for days. Unless they got nothing here, nothing would be ideal. A Blast Zone would be ideal for me though. I would love to draw a Blast Zone. Alright, so we go to five here. If they got a Wild Slash, we die. God's Willing does not. Okay, but does Faith's Shield. Faith Shield's not in here though. That's yeah, not. All right, so let's go Gaia Reach Sanitarium. Maybe we use it, maybe we won't, but if I can get out Smasher and block and then Endbringer and then Ugin and then start activating Tomb of the Spear Dragon, we might be able to stabilize, but this is gonna be super, super cool. If they have the spell here, I literally die. And they don't have a spell. That is good. Thought not Seer is cool. Um, I might just wanna do that just to make absolute certain they got nothing. Because this can still block well. I just want to make absolute sure that they have nothing. Alright, I think they just got lands. Because they didn't do anything. Okay, they do have something. Reckless Rage. Um, Aw, now I get to let them draw a card. But I, I do get to take something still. Yeah, but I die though. Yeah, I'm dead. My only way to live is if I top deck a Hedron Crawler. That's my only way to survive. I need to top deck Hedron Crawler. Because I can go Ugin, and then it's going to make Hedron Crawler cost two less, and then I can chump block and then block with my spirit. And that's the only way I can survive if they didn't top deck a spell here. Yo, Jaybro, how's it going? Thanks for coming out here to my stream. I think this is the first time I've seen you here in my stream. That's cool. I hope your stream went well. We're going on the sideboard. They kind of aggroed us out. Let's bring in Warping Whale, more Spatial Contortions, and some Ratchet Bombs. Be pretty good against all the aggro. And then we are going to cut Bane and Balagets because they're hecka slow. Uh, one Walker of the Waste, a Pillar, and an Endbringer, and another Pillar. And I'm gonna run it like that, I think. The Atmosphere kind of stops them from chaining off spells, but it's too cute. Let's run it like this. Was popping, was popping, was poppington. How have you been in magic and life? Life's been good, very regular, normal person life. And uh, magic's been great. The channel's been doing well. We just hit, uh, what is it, 8,000 subscribers. We're at like 8,300 right now, en route to getting our goal of 10K for the year. And um, yeah, I've been doing really good with the TCG player and stuff. Uh, would you like to play first? Yes. Um, yeah, we got Ratchet Bomb and then a good blocker, so I guess it's a good reason to keep this. Blast Zone is really good in this matchup. Blast Zone is really what I want to draw. Oh yeah, it's super good. Yo, Wall Gecko, how's it going? I still haven't found my Wall Gecko. He's around here somewhere. I, just, I don't know where he is. I lost him. Alright. Ratchet Bomb. Take it up once. 
make the opponent not commit one drops anymore. I should have waited to get them to commit a little bit more. Yeah, rip gecko. Thanks, Jay. I hope your channel's been doing really good. By the looks of it, it's been doing great. One of the biggest MTG channels. I mean, aside from like the pro players that you see on like um Grand Prix and you know pro tours and stuff, I think you're the biggest one, right? All right, let's go, Mattery Shaper. And I kind of want to take this Ratchet Bomb up to two. I'm going to chump block here on something, but I want to get rid of that 10th Street more than I want to get rid of that favorite Hoplite. Because this thing's super good. Hello. King's Gambit, thank you for the follow. All right, Grid for battle. Gird for battle. All right, no matter what, I think I will block 10th Street here. You know, maybe I'm supposed to, maybe I'm supposed to blow up the Ratchet Bomb to take no damage here. I'm not sure. This gets one more counters too, right? It does. And if I can at least get a free land off this Battery Shaper, that's fine enough because that gets me up to Walker of the Waste. And Walker of the Waste is very fat like your mom. So I guess I'm going to jump it. You love cubing, but hopefully you get cube IRL. Oh, dude, my, my brother has a cube and it's it's like so much fun to just have like all those cool cards. Okay, since the opponent, since the opponent committed another spell to um, the favorite hoplite, I'm more inclined to crack this ratchet bomb now, and I think I will. They're probably debating me, but they're probably debating me. But okay, it doesn't look like it. It actually worked. So yeah, I can. All right, let's put that onto the battlefield. That seems pretty good. And then we can get out Walker of the Wastes. Monastery Swift Spear. All right, so now they committed their one drop. I can get out another Waste here and then just go Walker as an 8-8 Trample. And I don't think they can break that unless they got double Reckless Rage. And I wouldn't count it out. I'm pretty sure they do. Because you know they're gonna... You're one of my fave streams, and I love your story about not talking a ton when you were younger and then finding your magical voice via choice. You are great at streaming. Thank you. That's like the kindest words I've got like all month. That is super awesome. I didn't know you watched my stream. I didn't even know that. That's super awesome. Turns out they didn't have double reckless rage. And I am going to snap off this favorite hoplite block. They got Reckless Rage. They two for one themselves, but at least we get it off the board. Show me that Reckless Rage. I know you got it. Yeah, like Team J, bro, that story is like, I didn't even know that I was going to be a content creator for a living, especially when I was like a little kid. I would have never expected that I was going to be talking in front of a lot of people for a living. Because I was, like, the most turtled up, like, quiet kid. Quiet, shy, untalkative kid. So I could not have expected to be producing content for people for a living. That's crazy. I talked that to Nenbringer, which is nice. Don't watch a ton because life's been keeping you buck. But when you watch, it's awesome. Also, please describe your brother's cube. Oh, yeah, I understand that. Life gets in the way sometimes. Uh, same thing for me. I love to watch a lot more content, but there's just not enough hours in the day. I wish there was like 30 hour days because I'd love to get a lot more done. Um, The cube is just like literally just like good stuff. Just a bunch of a pile of just like random rares like rtr stuff and like all stuff from like 
standard the past 10 years. There's a lot of goodies. Um, all right, so they got a feather out, which I definitely like to find an Ugin to kill. So I think, or you know what? I'm not gonna die to this feather immediately. And I can shut it down with Endbringer. All right, I'm gonna go Cryptic Caves, and then I'm gonna go Walker the Wastes, and then I'm just going to shut this down from attacking. So first things first, I'm just going to ping them in the face. And then I'll pass a turn, and when they go to combat, I'll just lock down Feather. If they have God's Willing, then they get us, but if not, then we get to lock down Feather here. They get another Monastery Swift Spear, alright? Alright, so let's prevent Feather from attacking. And we can go ahead and block the Favorite Hoplite here, and take the Swift Spear hits. They got a bunch of spells to chain, it might be a little bit dangerous for us, but... Let me try this. Attacks with Hoplite. Attacks with the Swift Spears. Okay, interesting. So they must have something to get a little bit of damage in there, because there's a reason they're doing this. Uh, let's block Favorite Hoplite. They're not preventing all the damage from it, so at least... There's that. No, because this in particular, Cyber Shade, says they prevent all damage that be dealt to it if you target it. So, uh, we can't kill it here, but they are going to Reckless Rage, and Reckless Rage is going to kill my Walker of the Wastes. But at least I still got to block. We're going to get hit for four down to seven. Uh, Ratchet Bomb. Nice! Ratchet Bomb on one is gonna be good here. So, Ratchet Bomb. Uh, let's... I could go this plus activate... I could draw a card with Endbringer, but I think I would rather... Um, I think I would rather activate Tomb of the Spirit Dragon rather than draw a card, right? Um, would I rather draw a card? Okay, what are my options if I activate Tomb No, no, because if I activate Tomb of the Spear Dragon, then I can't lock down Feather or a favorite Hoplite. So yeah, I'm just going to draw a card. Wastes. All right, let's pass a turn, untap. We got to live this turn. We got to live. What do they get back to hand? They got Reckless Rage back to hand, and they get to kill my blocker and I die. Alright, they got it. Just barely. Just barely. Man, that Feather getting back the Reckless Rage is hard to beat when you're a creature deck. Got a game here against Hobby Gobby, and yes, we're going to be in the play with some Pioneer Colorless Eldrazi, and that is going to be a keep. So, starting on probably Hedron Crawler... Depending, they got an elemental creature avatar. Maybe they're a heavy removal deck, but maybe I go Pillar of Origins. I do have a lot of Eldrazi I want to ramp into, so I guess I'll do Pillar of Origins on turn two because it doesn't die to removal. Yeah, Pillar of Origins, sweet here. Yeah, definitely. They could have Fatal Push. I'm not going to do Hedron Crawler. Go on Pillar. Pillar of Origins on Eldrazi. If you're going to address a Spanish Eldrazi, is it El Eldrazi? Well, let's take the stop off of their main phase. I don't need that anymore. Definitely a potential Thoughtseize deck. Gifted Aetherborn, that's annoying. But I can exile that, which I do think I'm going to take this turn to exile that. So, let's pass a turn. I'm not going to allow that thing to stick around and block my Reality Smasher, so I'm just going to exile it here. Hopefully they don't have a second one. But they seem to always do. I guess Liliana, Gideon. Okay, no Lily or Gideon. Thoughtseize. That's unfortunate. Literally one mana kill Reality Smasher. That's crazy. That's crazy. Thoughtseize is way too powerful. 
I was so hyped for like Pioneer not having Hand Strap to deal with, but unfortunately Thoughtseize is still in Pioneer, so just can never escape it wherever I go. Thoughtseize is always gonna be there. It's such an unfun card, which the things I don't like in Magic the Gathering are cards that are specifically unfun. I think that Thoughtseize is definitely one of them. Alright, well if I draw a land, I can crack this cryptic caves to replace it. Let's go with Mattery Shaper and a Hedron Crawler. So it's uh, Vampires. We're going up against Vampires. This deck is super good. Vampires is amazing. So this is probably going to be a very difficult matchup because it, in my own opinion, I think Black White Vampires, definitely like top five best Pioneer decks. I think it has very solid card quality. Yeah, things like Drana, things like Soren, things like Soren cheating in Champion of Dusk. It's absolutely crazy. Definitely top five Pioneer decks. Well, can't really block, but I can't really attack, so I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Because if I swing in a Drana, that has first strike. If I try to block, they just, like, eat it. So I'm going to take it. Yo, that's a good top deck. That's what I wanted. Get rid of Drana, get in for three. Maybe I should have got rid of Adontos, but Drana is a lord, so might as well. Black White Vampires, a Blood Baron is sweet. Yeah, I've seen a, a list with like Blood Barons. It's Blood Baron of Escopa as a playset. It's such a sweet card. But in Pioneer, I feel like it's probably maybe perhaps answerable. Like you got some red decks run like Roast and Lava Coil. There's Oko. Like that blue deck we just went up against was running rapid hybridization. Mono blue tempo can easily deal with it. And mono blue tempo is everywhere. Um, the go big mono green devotion decks don't care about it. So like, it's got its problems, but it does have resistance from a lot of stuff. I will definitely trade with the vampire, the dire moon. I'm okay with that. I drew a land, so at least I get to crack this Cryptic Caves. Endbringer, and I can play that. That's cool. So, first things first, I'm going to bait a block here. I I'm okay with trading whatever here with for the Reality Smasher, or for the Mattery Shaper. I'm okay with trading anything here. Getting Vampires off the board is all I want to do. I want them to get less value off their Champion of Dusk. All right, now, Endbringer, if they didn't have this Lord, Endbringer could start pinging away their, their dudes, but fortunately they got that Lord, so I gotta find another Spatial Contortion. Once you in the deck, and Smuggler's Copter. This is one that a lot of people are saying should be banned. This is the one. It's in, like, half the Pioneer decks you see. No blocks. All right, so... I guess I can I can start drawing cards with this, or I can just like swing with it. Like they can uh, activate Smuggler's Copter and double block, and then give this indestructible, which then that would leave me in a less than ideal position, and I don't want that to happen. Um, I could just swing Mattery Shaper, which is not bad. I think I want to use this to draw a card. Yeah, I don't think I have a really good attack with Endbringer here. I'm just gonna draw a card. All right, Cryptic Caves, at least I can crack that place itself. Maybe get a Thought Knots here, and I don't. I just get more lands. All right, so let's go attacking. Get in there with the Reality, or Mattery Shaper. If they want to trade, that's fine by me. I can start gaining a bunch of life off of these tombs. And now I can stop on their main phase. That I can lock down something with Endbringer. Yo, Sergio, how's it going? 
Okay, so Smuggler's Copter is ready to get in there. I think what I'm going to do is just lock it down with Endbringer because I don't want them looting. Yo, that's fine. You can thought seize me. Okay. They see lands. Gonna go to combat. Dusk Legion Zealot replaces itself. All right, let's go ahead and lock down the smuggler's copter, make it unable to attack or block. And I think I'll just go ahead and chump block here with the Legion Crawler, save some life. Gets him with the Danto, and that's it. I kind of just want to jump here. I have plenty of mana. I will gain less life with Tomb. Maybe that's a good reason not to. I kind of want to save my mana here. You know, I think I'm probably going to take it. I think I want, I want this mana for, Crypt for Tomb of the Spirit Dragon. Fatal pushes. That's unfortunate. So I should have blocked. Their last card was Fatal Push, so I don't get to even use the mana. Bane of Balaged, and I can play that. Ooh, that's interesting. All right, well, I think um, if I go in with Matter Shaper and Endbringer, they're 100% blocking there. They might trade here. Um, that might be worth it, dude. I think that I am just going to swing. No. Nah. If I swing a Bane of Balaged, they're just going to trade with their vamp their death-touching vampire anyways. I can just use Endbringer to start pinging them at least. So I'm just going to get in with Mattery Shaper, I think. I can stay alive. I can stay alive. My only blockers are going to be Endbringer and Bane of Balaged, which can block um, Dusk Legion Zealot and the uh, Adonto Vanguard. They're suiting that up at the beginning of combat. I'm okay with this trade. They want to trade a Smuggler's Copter for the Matter Shaper. I'm 100% okay with that. Uh, one, one second. Hold on, guys. I will be right back. All right, I'm back. So they are going to trade with Smuggler's Copter, and that is absolutely perfectly fine by me. That is exactly what I wanted. And um, they're going to go looting, but they do have to discard it immediately after. And I'm going to get a free piece of value off of this. And if I can get a land, that'd actually be ideal, because then that means I can leave up Hedron Crawler as a chump blocker. And that is exactly what I get, which is pretty nice. And, um, and that'll also allow me to leave up Endbringer's ability, his activation. Let's so start off by shooting them for one. And then I'll just play Bane of Balaged. And when I pass a turn, I get to untap my Endbringer. Now, if I want to lock down a creature here, it'd probably be a Danto Vanguard. But at this point, I kind of just want to chump. They can suit up Shamley Man as well, just Alpha. Aw, oh, dude, they top decked another Legion Lieutenant? I definitely need to leave up Chump Blocks here. And now that Sedanto's Vanguard is incredibly annoying. I don't know if they even have the time to even, like, spend a bunch of life anymore. They probably just get in with the Danto Vanguard, I would imagine. Everything? I will happily trade off for the Lord. I will happily just block that lord and then block here and then chump. Dude, I'm okay with that. So block there, block there, chump there. 
Take three. I'm cool with that. And let's ping them. I think that was a fine turn for me, actually, rather than them. And now I forced them to chump block with their Legion Lieutenant if I attack with both. Oh, and a Reality Smasher. Oh, man, I think it's over. I think I just ended the game there. Yeah, I just go Reality Smasher, and then I um, use Endbringer and force this to not be able to block. Can't attack or block this turn, and then I just go swinging for 12. <laughs> Yo! Endbringer takes over games. So good. Nice. Alright, on to sideboarding. That was game number one, right? Yeah. Oh man, this is gonna be difficult. I definitely want more spatial contortions and a warping whale and ratchet bombs. Um and that's probably it. So let's bring in those. Bane about to get a slow. Um Walker, the waste is a good blocker, but slow. Uh, let's cut one Pillar of Origins, one Endbringer, and one more Pillar of Origins, and run it like that. Yeah, End Endbringer's MVP every time. He just does so much work. So much work. Okay, this hand I'm going to keep. Got plenty of mana, and then a removal spell, and then we're going to ramp into Walker of the Wastes. Don't thought seize me, bro. It's so annoying. Why do you have to put that card in your vampire deck? Don't run that. Yo, what's up, O King's Wild? What's up, Spaghetti King? What's up, Terbium? Played against it, Stasis was smothering Ty the other day. It was crippling. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Smothering Tide with Stasis. That's mean. That's absolutely mean. They took my removal spell. That's what I wanted. But at least I drew a Ratchet Bomb, and Ratchet Bomb on two is going to be pretty good. Ratchet Bomb on two is pretty good. Oh, another Ratchet Bomb. The backup. It's so good. Let's take the stop off of their main phase too. Only need that when I have an Endbringer out. There's a Soren. Are you gonna cheat into Champion of Dusk or something? Another gifted Aethermorn. All right. Uh, let's take this up to two. It's kind of risky to play Hedron Crawler here, so. Because if I whiff a land, then it's not worth it. Because if I draw a land, I go Walker the Waste, and then I blow this up. But as it sits, as it sits, I don't have the land, so I'm not going to, like, trust the top deck currently. Yo, what's up, Relox? You love Thoughtseize? You must love Tron and Storm, too. <laughs> This gift today, the born's getting quite thick. They get in for four, we'll take it. And they pass. Not gonna do anything with that. Alright, so I guess I go with. I can just blow up this ratchet bomb and then play Hedron Crawler, which I probably have to do that. Hedron Crawler again. Let's go with another ratchet bomb. And take this up. And if I draw a land, I get down to Ugin and blow up that Soren, And that's the plan. Or I get down to Ugin and blow up the Blood Baron that they're about to play. Don't thought seize me. Wow, dude, can you stop? Can you not? Can you not? Yep, takes Ugin because they got a removal spell for this. And they don't care about that because they got a Death Toucher. <laughs> Yep, Legion Lieutenant, which now I can't blow up. 
And let me guess, minus three Soren plus a Soren. All right, well, I get down in bringer. Rulox is now following. Thank you very much for your follow. Welcome to the live stream. Found your YouTube channel through that deck tech on YouTube. What deck tech? Oh, Twiddlestorm? Oh, I've had a lot of people come up to me and say they found me from Twiddlestorm. Even when I went to GP Vegas and like people were coming up to me saying, Yo, Twiddlestorm, I saw your video. Have you ever played Thoughtseize twice with Dreadhorde Arcanist? Oh, dude, I was actually super close to playing that on the channel, but I didn't. I'm kind of tempted to just trade with this Lord here, but I don't think I should. I'd rather trade it off for my Walker of the Waste, and I will trade it off for my Walker of the Waste, but I'm not going to trade off. Like, I can even just blow up Ratchet Bomb on it right now, but... Go to the Spirit Dragon and Walker... Oh, I should have just saved that. All right, um... Um... One, two, three, four, five, and then blow up Ratchet Bomb on two. Is that worth it? Because I feel like I can start attacking Soren. I, I am just going to try to attack down Soren. I think I can get there like that. Because Soren's not doing a lot. I think I'm going to put Walker the Waste out there. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put Walker the Waste out there. And... If they remove Walker the Waste, then I'll crack this Ratchet Bomb. If they don't, then I'll just trade off. Or you know what I could do? Hold on. I could just make that thing unable to swing. I'm going to do that. That seems good to me. And then I can blow up Soren. I don't even need to. I don't even need to blow up Soren. Yeah, I think I got him by the balls here. Yep, you can give that Death Touch and Life Link. It's not going to be able to attack. Play Grixis Pyromancer on stream. You get to do a lot there. Yo, that can't swing. Sorry to tell you, opponent, but that can't swing. Smuggler's Copter. Ooh, I want to blow that up. I probably am going to blow that up. I'll wait till next turn, though. Yo, <laughs> Warping Whale also. Alright, let's crack this Cryptic Caves. Draw a card. Let's blow up this Ratchet Bomb on two. And then I'll Thought Seize them. Make sure, or I'll thought not sear them, and then I'll kill Soren, and then I just completely destroy them. All right, what you got in there? Bugger's copter, Legion Lieutenant. Well, let's take Legion Lieutenant, and let's go to combat, and swing at Soren, and swing at them. Get Soren out of here. This is so good. This is so good. Yep, untap Endbringer. Dusk Legion Zealot. You know what I think about that? Ping. Yeah, see, if you want to Thought Seize me, opponent, I can Thought Seize you too. Sure. Smuggler's Copter is fine. Alright, so I think let's go ahead and Gyre Reach here. Draw a card, discard a card. The opponent has to discard a card too. All right, let's discard this wastes. And they discard a concealed courtyard. So I drew them past the land. And let's pass and leave up Endbringer, leave up Warping Whale. Make sure they can't rat us and make sure they don't get to attack. So <laughs> seems pretty, pretty good. D spark. Unfortunately, that's a source. That's an instant, so I can't deal with that. So that's fine. 
But we still got lethal. Endbringer is such a powerhouse. So good. Oh no, opponent. Are you really gonna just like salt, just like let the game literally, the game timer run out because you're salty? Don't do that. It's not okay when people do that. Dude, you have no outs. You're empty handed. You lost. Just concede. If you, if you are anybody, if you, okay, there we go. I thought they were doing it. All right, but don't ever do that, guys. Boys and girls watching on YouTube, don't ever do that. Don't ever just, like, let the timer run because you're salty. All right, so let's draw a card just because we can. <laughs> yep, and they scoop. All right, that'll do it. GG. Black White Vampires is effing good, dude. Before we get into the sped up rounds of the video, I would like to remind you that if you were considering purchasing today's deck, or any cards really, it would be awesome if you purchased through our decklist link down below. That is our tcgplayer.com affiliate link, and when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. And with that being said, let's resume the video. Hope you enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. We like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut from the video, you can find the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there. So I really, really wanted to keep some of these games not sped up. Like, we're speeding up four games today, that's a lot. But it's just that, like, every game, like, besides the five that were not sped up in today's video, all the rest of the games were just so dang long. And I had to speed them up or else the video is going to be, like, over two hours long. So, this first game we're going up against Mono Green Aggro. Or Mono Green Devotion because they had Nissa. It's weird. Like, the Mono Green Devotion decks have sort of taken a turn ever since the bannings. It's like, nobody really plays Monogreen Stompy that much, and people are putting a Stompy curve on the Devotion deck, or putting things like Steel Leaf Champion and Questing Beast and stuff like that, um, but also keeping some aspects of Devotion, you know, like um, Nissa and Ulamog and stuff like that. Anyways, uh, Endbringer. This Endbringer gets down and starts controlling the board because that's what Endbringer does. End Endbringer was easily the biggest MVP of this deck, of this entire day of gameplay. Endbringer was just like, whenever you go up against a creature aggro deck and you get down an Endbringer and get to untap with it, it just starts taking over the game because it makes stuff unable to attack. It pings X ones. It draws you cards. It blocks because you leave because it untaps during their untap step. So it does like everything to just destroy aggro. And that's exactly what it did there. So in this game, we have an Endbringer we're trying to get up to again. Now, I knew it. This game, I, I knew it. I saw it at the beginning of the game. I was like, this Steel Leaf Champion is going to knock me down to like two life. And I'm going to stabilize. I, I predicted five life, but it knocked me down to two because they also had some creatures. This Ronos was annoying. Because you now whenever they play a creature, this Ronos can attack and then just like, I'm going to be forced to chump block. I do get down to Ugin and minus to destroy that Pelucrino. So now uh, that Ronos can attack anymore. But now I have Endbringer down. And this Ugin is starting to make chump blockers that can block the Ronos. And now this Endbringer is making it so Pelucrinos can't attack. And all I have to do is go big enough and go wide enough to get around them. And this Endbringer can even make their things and able to block. This Galta comes down. I saw it in their hand when I thought not seared them. But fortunately, this Ugin can come down and blast that Zakama as well. Because the Ugin ticked up enough to blast the Galta. So now I get Walker the Waste down, and it is like, I think, an 8 8 right now. And that's bigger than Pelucranos. And they forget that I Sorcerer Spyglass on Ronos. They were planning to trade there, but instead, Walker the Waste just straight up ate their dude. And that's going to cause the concession. So taking down Monogreen Aggro, the fat Walker the Waste, the Sorcerer Spyglass on Ronos, and Bringer taking over the game. That's what I like to see. So we move on to the next game, and this is against Jund. I see Sylvan Carry added, so when you see Sylvan Carry added, you know that somebody definitely wants ramp that's not going to be killed because they're trying to ramp into something relevant. They have Rascal Kogar Queen, and that thing, I have to try to get this Endbringer down. I'm not drawing lands, but I really need lands to get this Endbringer down and attack that uh, Vraska. But I do not get the lands, and that Vraska is able to ult, so they get an emblem saying that whenever a creature deals damage to a player, they lose the game, and that Corvold is able to attack me, and I lose. But that's what you get when you don't draw lands. So this time they thought sees me, they take my good stuff. They uh, take my reality smasher out of my hand with that thought sees, unfortunately. Thought sees is just stupid powerful. It's just like one mana, deal with a giant planeswalker or a reality smasher. And you don't have to have the repercussions of 
reality smasher. It absolutely does. And then they get down triple witch's oven and a uh, cauldron familiar. And then I'm able to like get down a blast zone and crack it to try to blow up all their witches ovens, but they still have a bunch of treasures left behind. And this cauldron familiar is slowly but surely draining me out. And this game, I am drawing like absolutely no threats. I'm getting like the world's worst draws. All I'm drawing is hedron crawlers and like lands and do nothing. Like I actually wanted lands to crack these cryptic, crack these cryptic caves, but I just could not like, I forgot to crack the character case when I drew the blast zone. I was just snapped it off really quick because I wanted to destroy all their witches ovens. And now they got that devil draining us out and double cauldron familiar. And I just scoop it up because I am drawing absolutely nothing. So that was just a matter of just like getting good draws. And that game, I did not get good draws. So they're able to walk all over us. So now we move on to the next sped up game. And this one was the longest game of the day. This game lasted like an hour. One of my whole recordings was just this game alone. So I get out some dudes, they start blessed alliancing them, they get out big to fairy and I scoop it up. And you know how blue eye control go? Blue eye control is always going to be, if it's in, if you see me going up against blue eye control in a video, it's probably going to be a sped up round just because it takes so long to fight them. If you don't just lose to them in like six turns, you're, you're just going to grind out forever. And that's exactly what happened in specifically this game. So I'm able to like, I get this Mystic Forge down very quickly because I had the Hedron Crawler wrap it into it on the third turn and they didn't counter it. So now I spend the whole game just reaping value off of this uh, Sorceress, this uh, Mystic Forge. And it doesn't even like matter because they're able to answer everything I do. Because the way to beat a control deck, if they're if you're not going to get completely beaten by a board wipe, if they have a board wipe, you lose. But you have to overwhelm them. You have to get their life total really low and just get some kind of reach to get there. But when you're playing literally one threat per turn because we're a clunky Eldrazi deck, they can just answer everything we do. They're just, they have like the Castle Ventress scrying them. They got that Teferi drawing them cards and also they're a Luxac. So they keep top decking answers to every single thing that I draw. And it's just a matter of time before they run out of cards, run out of things. I was able to Thought Not Seer two of their Teferis. And um, right here's the part after this turn here, after they sweep us, I'm like, this Teferi is getting absolutely terrifying because it's about to ult. So what I do is I take the turn off to take up this blast zone to five so I can blow up to fairy. And I'm just praying that they don't find a field of ruin that they, and they, for some reason, they don't take the field of ruin off that Jace activation. And I'm able to blow up the Teferi. Now I'm pretty sure they're out of Teferis at this point. So they're out of like win cons and their last win con is taking this Jace up to eight, ulting it and getting an Eldrazi out of my deck to beat me down with. And also using that castle Ardenvale. But I do have threat after threat after threat after threat because I did get a good chunk of card advantage off of that Mystic Forge. I even have this Karn to come down and give me even more card advantage. And now it's getting to the point where the opponent has like a dozen cards left in their deck. And now they have Narset plus Gaia Reach going. So at our draw step, they're able to make us discard a card. And that's pretty cool. But I'm able to make them draw cards too. So as it gets lower and lower and lower down into the game, um, and they're getting super low on cards, I get to the point where I start activating my own Gaia Reach to try to deck them out because they got like less than 10 cards left. I got like 14 left because this card is making me exile two at a time. They're able to get a Reality Smasher off of the Jace, but that doesn't matter. And I'm able to trade and they got one card left and I'm able to Gaia Reach and that is going to be the game. That was a grind. The opponent would just not give up even though they had like no win cons left. But that's just the nature of blue eye control players. They just want to fight to the very end because they have all the time in the world. They don't care if the op their opponent has time or not. But they realize they don't have enough time on the clock to possibly beat me with like five minutes left when their win con is decking out with, with Safari. And that's what you get for playing the slowest deck ever on MTGO. I feel like blue controls a deck you want to play in paper because you can play it quicker. But on Moto, you're likely going to time out, and they usually do, and they did. 
So we got there and we go on to the final game. This is against Marvel. They had a bunch of energy. Their team are colors. They had Rogue Refinals giving them the energy. They able to get down the Marvel and spin it, but they whiff. They get a seven on the conduit. Meanwhile, I'm able to beat them down. And this is hilarious. I don't know if you caught that right there, but I swung with two dudes. They decided no blocks. I had two spatial contortions in hand. So I was able to give both of my guys plus three, minus three, and that was able to reach them and get there for lethal. They were trying to just hold on a turn and then spin the Marvel again but no double space contortion for the pump spell you don't ever expect that to happen but it did so that is really cool we go to the next game their karn is able to find the marvel for them and shut down our pillar so that makes it so we can't play that walker of the waste there and i'm getting flooded either way and then they are able to spin the marvel twice in a row and since they whiffed the first time i know they're not going to whiff the second time and i did not draw an answer to marvel so they're able to get out emerical and i just scoop it up because i'm not going to beat that emerical i have no just hard disruption or hard ways to kill emerical ugin is is hard kill but only kills colored things and emerical is colorless so that's not going to work out we go on to the next game and i feel like i'm doing pretty good here except when i start whiffing my lands even though it's a 25 land deck then I feel like I'm in a little bit of uh, trouble because if I were able to get Walker the Waste, Walker the Waste and the reality smash them, they would have been dead like right now, like literally right now. But I keep whiffing my lands. Uh, when my Matter is Shaper dies, I'm able to get a land off of it, but then I lost my Mana Dork, so my Mana Rock. So now I'm back down to needing lands again. So I spent the six turns there trying to find mana and just couldn't do it. And that gives them the time to like loot through their deck, find their Marvel and spin it. And that's just what happens when you don't draw lands. And uh, that's a factor in Magic the Gathering that you got to take into account. The luck factor, it happens sometimes. They're able to get out a bunch of Woodweaver's Puzzle Knots, getting them three life at a time, stabilizing them. I finally get my land for Reality Smasher, but it's too little too late. They're able to harness lightning my Thought Out Seer, spin the Marvel, get an Emrakul, and I don't think I can actually beat that because they're going to suicide my board into them. So GG to Marvel. So we ended up with six total wins. The deck was a lot of fun. There's a lot of different ways you can actually build Eldrazi. You can add a color if you want. Like if you add a color, you can just cut Walker of the Waste. That's the only reason like this is a colorless deck is just because Walker of the Waste and running wastes. Um, what would really benefit you a lot is probably running green and like running like Mana Dorks maybe. Um, but then again, you might be stuck with the hand with a bunch of colorless lands and no forest for your Lana War Elves and whatnot. So maybe colorless is better. Maybe like the sky's the limit. You can run any color you want to run with this. And also um, this whole package was sweet with the ramp, but there's also different ways you can build Eldrazi and make it an actual aggro deck. So you can run like endless ones. You can run um, Eldrazi mimics and you can run like hangerback walkers and just completely just like aggressive with more space contortions like this original list had a place set of warping whales and that was honestly a lot of fun and uh, you can run it all those kinds of ways so let me know what you think about the deck in the comments down below i hope you enjoyed the video if you did hit that like button and subscribe if you're new for the spice used to gameplay every other day let me know what deck you want to see in the comments down below and um check out the social media links down below and the link to twitch is there as well if you want to catch one of these live streams we stream every saturday monday and wednesday at 4 p.m pacific standard time hope to see some of you guys there thank you to all the sponsors the patrons and the twitch chat we're gonna get on out of here thank you for watching and i'll catch you in the next video peace out